tale with a twist. Alton itself obviously is a very small village and it was owned and run by, by the 14th, 15th, 16th Earl. And basically, if you if you lived in the village and you worked on the estate, now some people actually lived on the estate, the gamekeepers, um, people who looked after the horses and all that sort of thing. And actually part of my family lived on the estate for very nearly over 150 years. And you've got to bear in mind, he owned ev literally everything for miles around. So he owned mines in, in, in Chile, he owned the, the, the mines in, in the canals in Cornlow, locally. Um, but he would come this way, and then he would be on his estate, probably six miles away, um, when he first did his estate. And we mentioned earlier about the flag tower, and, and, and that was the old idea of building that in about 1810. And it took ten years to build the flag tower, but the old point of it was that you could actually see the flag tower from anywhere. Mm. It's, it's snobbish. And we're about what, in the moment, we're about two miles away from Alton Towers. And as we go through this way now, you'll actually see where, where the chained oak is. He was extremely wealthy, I mean, extremely uh, religious. But I think if you relate the, you know, how religious he was to the acts, to the curse that we talk about later yeah. on, you can understand why he took it so damn seriously. I mean, obviously, you've got the chained oak, you've got proof that something went drastically wrong at the end of the day. You would not chain a tree that size up if something wasn't, you know, wrong. You know, was it a gypsy or was it a witch? Was, was it a witch or was it uh, an old woman? And the, the legend itself, as I say, has been in the village for, for well, hundreds of years. I wouldn't be very old when I first heard about the legend. And, you know, as a, <laughs> as a child and everything else, you know, it's a ghost story. It's a thing that, you know, they've got it wrong. It doesn't exist. And then basically, um, oh, what would you be, sort of 12, 13, you know, when we actually saw the trip. And, you know, it comes to an end of shock to actually see that, the, you know, the damn thing exists and, it, and it's spooky, you know. Here we are, this is it. I mean, this is a tree that's, that's chained up and still here to this day. You won't get many locals climbing the steps. You certainly won't get many locals, you know, coming down here after dusk and, and going anywhere near that tree. This is where they would have stopped. This is exactly where, you know, it, it would have all happened. This is where the, the, the witch or, or, or the gypsy, this is, you know, what would have made the curse. 
this is the evidence behind us. You can see the tree right behind us, all chained up. It's been chained up for over 180 years. If they open the vault, the, the, the meddling and things, they, they don't understand. We should leave the vault alone. suspended stone floor which had been quite badly damaged through neglect largely they had to take up a number of stone slabs which were broken so that we could repair them or replace them and in so doing they found what looked like some I suppose you'd call them round flat tin biscuit tins they put them to one side just being builders possibly with a view to opening them up during their break but we still had the arch archaeologists on site and they recognised them, or they thought they recognised what they may be, so they relieved them, sent them along to a laboratory where they were opened under laboratory conditions, and they found undeveloped Victorian filth. And it was very, very carefully uh, treated and developed. And hey presto, we have the film of the oak tree being chained, which up until that time, to many of us, was little more than just a legend, but there was the evidence. restoration work in the towers um, and it was during that period that a number of old artifacts were found including an old bookcase that was moved using very traditional archaeological methods but what we found behind was in fact clearly an archway which had been bricked up why was it there because all of our research as these surveys show, there was nothing behind there. There never was anything behind there. So you, you just looked at it and you could see there's an arch, there's a head, there's the jam, but it had been bricked up. So the archaeologists very, very carefully, literally with brushes and 
chisels and with trowels and very carefully raked out the mortar, dismantled all of the brickwork and masonry after it had been numbered and photographed, put to one side. We were getting a feel after we moved the first few bricks, we knew there was something behind there that we weren't expecting. And then we found the tunnel behind it. It doesn't make sense in that the architect who designed this would have designed this in a linear way. There should be a star shape. There's never been an entrance to another linear section. Uh, there has never been any evidence from the outside. There have been a number of staff who, um, whether they're from my building team, who have felt cold drafts, who felt moisture, condensation on their hands, equipment malfunctioning. Oh, 